Alright guys, today we're going to start reading the whole collection of Peter Rabbit. Let's get ready. Listen and look very carefully. Let's start reading. The Tales of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sand bank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit, one morning you may go into the field or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put into a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But found the end of the cucumber frame, whom should be meat but, but Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbage. But he, he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake, calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was mostly dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden for the, he had forgotten the way. Back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes amongst the cabbage and the other one shoe amongst the potatoes. After looking, lo losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away to all together if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for the lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overhead by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to the expert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve which he intended to pop up on the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out of just in time, leaving the jacket behind him. and rushed into a tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking underneath each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three plants. He was tired of running after Peter. He went back. to his work.
Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had lost the least idea which way to go. Almost, also, he was very damp with sitting in a can. After a time, he began to wonder about going limpity limpity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out of over the stone doorstep, carrying peas to, and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her to the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way across, straight across, and the garden. But he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mister McGregor filled the water can. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as she, as if she, it was, were alive. Peter thought it best to go away, without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a who ho scratch 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 scratch. Peter suddenly. Scattered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed up on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing that he saw was Mister McGregor hoeing onions. With his his back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could, go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him and the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow or to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped trying or looking behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired. And flopped up down upon the nice soft sand and on the floor on the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done to his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some cam- chamomile tea, and she gave a dozen of it, of to Peter, one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries supper. The end. Hope you guys like the book. Stay tuned for the next book, which is. Tail squirrel napkin. Thank you for watching. Bye.